Hey everyone, welcome back to the Beyond Extent podcast. And we're back here with Will on the other side, and I'm Timothy. Hey Will. Hello. How are you doing, man? I'm doing uh, very nicely. Very nicely. <laughs> <laughs> and what so, about you, my friend? Yeah, yeah, I'm doing good, man. Doing good. Um, we just had a good chat about... Uh, some of the stuff that we we've been working on in the background um and i think uh it's gonna be some exciting stuff in the future and i think we we came up with a pretty good plan i don't want to spoil too much i don't want to give too yeah. much away but yeah i'm excited for it man i'm glad we had that talk same it was, uh, it was good yeah um so i mean let's just dive right into it because this is going to be a big one um today we're going to be talking about the interview process of well for the games industry basically um i mean i guess even more specifically for artists right I yeah mean, that's fair enough yeah because uh I, yeah, this, is, this is not gonna be... help a programmer out in any way, shape or form <laughs> yeah i mean there's there's probably gonna be some general tips for interviews but i think yeah we, we don't i mean i guess there's enough out there on that right mm -hmm. we want to be a little, little bit more specific to our field yeah, yeah, exactly. Like a programmer is not going to do an art test. <laughs> yeah, let's hope so. Uh, yeah, man. Okay, so do we do we want to dive into some background from from our personal stories first, just to yeah start with something? I think that's a good plan. Yeah, because I got to be honest. Like thinking back to the first interview that I did. I can't really remember that much, but I do know, I do remember everything from like the, the Ubisoft one, even yeah. though that's also like two years ago. Um, so yeah, uh, it's, it, it was a pretty, pretty interesting interview process because I do remember like the differences between, uh, between studios were pretty big. Yeah. The, the Ubisoft one was pretty involved where, yes. yeah, go ahead. No, yeah, yeah, it's it's um compared to the other interviews I've done, it was uh more steps, more um like it wasn't it wasn't like obviously it was about your work, mm -hmm. but it wasn't about your work as much. It was I felt like it was a lot more about like you know, testing you out how what what kind of person you are. Yeah. Um yeah. which I think kind of is reflected in just the people we work with like I don't I don't feel like there's anyone, you know, that has problems with other people you know what I mean? it's it's i think it really it helps with the general atmosphere in the studio if you really take a lot of time to interview people mm -hmm. and make sure that they fit yeah exactly because um in in the studio that we're working now like the the team fit is such a big thing like you mentioned and that's also why the the, the, the interview process was so involved because it wasn't just like me and another artist and maybe a lead just sitting in a room it was also like other people being involved from other disciplines yeah and then it was like uh I, let's let's think back like there was probably like qa people in my interview there was probably some lds in there too like everyone that you work together on like a regular basis basically is in that interview mm. and yeah. yeah now uh looking looking from the inside out like uh it, it's pretty interesting to see how that entire process is and how many people actually get a say in the interview but yeah. like why don't why don't we get started with like a, a quick overview of what like a normal interview process is um so do you want to you want to take that on sure i mean it's um so the i've had i would i would say i've only had like four four interviews for the gaming in the gaming industry and two of them were like when i was pretty young for like internships mm -hmm. um but there there was the two big ones i actually i um yeah i don't think i ever got no the more i think about it i've never had an interview and not gotten the job it was always just a struggle to get the interview <laughs> um but um yeah so my my, my two real interviews were were, were uh, very different um just because the first uh the first time it was a lot just a lot less stuff going on it was just like a f half an hour to 45 minute interview mm -hmm. um over skype and that was it that was the whole interview process oh okay um 
yeah, compared to Ubisoft, where I had first of all, it it took like longer to to even get like the first interview. Mm -hmm. Then it was a half hour Skype interview. Then it was a second half hour Skype interview a week later, uh, where I actually talked to you for the first time. You, oh yeah, uh, yeah. Um, that was, you actually interviewed me at one point, which is uh, yeah, it's cool to to like talk to you now again. But, <laughs> <laughs> it's actually so weird to get um, back at that yeah and then um, after the second Skype interview they flew me in for um, how long was it probably like three to four hours oh it's like a full day almost yeah of um, of just a studio tour and talking to all the different people like you said getting like a look at the project and, and that so mm -hmm. Yeah, it was it was as you can already hear, right? It's, it's it was a lot more, but interestingly enough, I've heard about people that applied at Ubisoft Berlin and didn't get the job, and then they applied at the place where I worked previously, and then they got the job there, and then sometimes there actually have been some like problems with their personalities, so that they had like either a strong personality or they just couldn't work with a lot of other people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's interesting to see that, you know, sometimes it can actually be a huge, huge improvement if you say, okay, let's do three interviews instead of one just to really get to know this person. Yeah, um, yeah. Whereas maybe smaller companies that don't have those resources say, okay, if the portfolio is good, we'll take them. Mm -hmm. Which obviously that's a big part. But then, yeah, sometimes you just have people that maybe aren't the best at um at working in a team yeah exactly or whatever it might be yeah yeah it's such an important factor and we talked about that in a previous episode where we talk about uh soft skills specifically mm. because i think a lot of people just underestimate that where obviously like we as artists we spend so much time just focusing on our portfolio and trying to get our skills up to a certain level that there there is a lot that we we kind of lack the experience on when it comes to just just talking to people weirdly enough and yeah. uh yeah that can have an impact on your on your uh interview like you said like we've we've had some people that we were like oh my god the portfolio is like top notch like we need to get this person on and then in the end they they didn't really fit the team or it it can be the other way around too where um it's like they they are looking for something else and they were just trying out something can also happen yeah yeah, yeah. Or, or i mean it's also obviously the more steps um there are it also has a lot more chances for the possible employee to you know feel out the company and see what's going on there you know i mean yeah if yeah. you if you like it it could have definitely been that at my first job i just had a 30 minute interview with one person mm -hmm. and uh i never saw the studio i never met any other people and yeah, um that's I so ended limiting. Up, like yeah and i ended up like moving to a different country at 19 uh for the first time like living away from my like from my mom right so mm -hmm. it could have been a total disaster as well because i like it was kind of a leap of faith right i was just like i mean this is a job in the industry i want to work in so i guess i'm i'm, I'm gonna take it yeah um, but you literally have no idea what the company is like or how the people are like in that company yeah it's it like, could have it could have been a complete disaster i'm, I'm really yeah. happy that it, it wasn't that it ended up being great <laughs> um but yeah it's it's not only for the employer it's also for the employee it's uh the more steps you have you can you can get a feel for yeah for everything of course you're never gonna you know be able to see everything but mm -hmm. after those four hours i got like a very good look into into the studio itself into the yeah. work and i had like i probably talked did, to did like you, 12 different people did you do the lunch as well uh no we didn't oh okay because but we uh, i went to the roof oh i mean that's the better option to be honest yeah <laughs> well, well I, I just like we just we just looked at the roof though we didn't yeah. we didn't have drinks on the roof unfortunately oh okay because that's that's how a normal day uh, normal interview day sort of goes unless you, you have to catch an early flight or whatever because you I can cheaped tell out you. on me hmm? you guys cheaped out on me I can't believe it <laughs> I think I, I, I stayed in Berlin for like an extra week after that I didn't have to catch any flights 
Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, we might have to rectify that then. <laughs> yeah. You can buy me lunch some other time. It's yeah. Fine. What is it, like a year later or whatever? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, actually, I think two days ago was uh, when I flew from Spain to Berlin to move here, uh, like to move back here. Oh, damn. And, um, I started yeah. working at uh, USO Berlin uh, two years ago. Like, you know, well, two years and three days ago, I think. Something like nice. that. Yeah, for me, it's uh, I, I'm one week away from my anniversary. Oh, shit. This year. Nice, man. Yeah. But yeah, normally normally how it works is, uh, well, in, in our studio, right? Like, we, we have, like, a, a round of interviews, and then it's lunch. So then normally, uh, either you can you can just go out and look for lunch, or sometimes we even involve some people from the team. Because that's that's also another thing. Like the games industry is so small that sometimes the people that you're interviewing already know some of the people inside the studio anyway. Mm. So they just go out for lunch together or whatever, and then you have like a second round of interviews after that. And then in our case, well, we we take you up the roof later, <laughs> yeah, most of the time, which is which feels like a unique selling point to our studio at this point. Oh yeah, I mean such a I mean. Not, not as much anymore that everyone's working from home, but... Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, thanks for the reminder. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, back to the back to the thing, right? So I, like, I, like I was saying, it's... I think the more... I mean, of course, you don't want to have 100 rounds of interviews, but mm -hmm. I think the more time that's put in to, like, see all the different aspects, yeah, it's, um, it's just beneficial for both parties. Um, mm -hmm. The only thing is, of course, it takes more time and it can be excruciating. I mean, for me, man, I was, I was so nervous, not even about like the interviews themselves, but just about like, you know, the time in between where you're like in this limbo. Oh yeah. Yeah. And you're like, Oh, am I, am I going to get an email? Did I get the job? And then it's like, Oh, I, I got an email. Oh, it's, it's just for another interview. <laughs> Oh god, yeah. Or it's just like I mean? spam and it's just like, Oh god. Damn. Yeah. 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 Like, I'm waiting for this email. Word. Stop bothering me. Man, um, I was oh, I was on hot calls when I was doing my interview because, I yeah, I I needed to get an answer like super quickly, and I remember at the end of the interview when it was done, uh, saying to them that I kind of expect an answer tomorrow. Oh my oh, god! Fuck! I oh, uh, Jesus! <laughs> that was I. I just had no choice. Like I needed an answer tomorrow because there was another studio um that i also did like an application with and they were had a deadline of the day after oh jesus so oh it god. was like so short on the ball and i was just like oh my god what am i doing here because i was literally thinking like i'm gonna say this and they're gonna be like oh no thanks yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Oof. but then uh yeah apparently they were just like uh yeah sure we'll make it happen and the next day i got an answer what? Yeah, that, I had to wait for a week. <laughs> yeah, that was that was pretty crazy because um, uh, I was in Berlin for two days. So the first day I had my interview, and then the second day I was basically walking around to explore Berlin. But what I was really doing, I was just sit sitting on a bench, like just sweating and just waiting for the confirmation, because the other studio had to have yeah. like um, a confirmation at twelve at noon. And then I was literally sitting there like 5 to 12, just like, oh my God, oh my God, what's going to happen? So I declined oh, them. And then after that, I got the confirmation from UB. Wow, this, that's, <laughs> that's fucking crazy. I had a similar thing with my university. Um, it was um, it was like the same kind of timing issue where um, I either had to pay for my next year of uni or, you know, I, 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 would, I would have to quit uni. Mm -hmm. um, and... I was waiting on at the same time there was like a deadline for that and I was waiting for the you know the email from Spain of like am I going to get the job or not Yeah yeah and then I ended up deciding you know what even if I don't get the job I don't want to stay at at uni if I don't get the job I'm just going to take some time and work on my portfolio Yeah, um, yeah. so I I went and quit uni and then literally that evening I got an email that I got the job Oof. Yeah it's it's crazy sometimes I mean but I, I do like those moments, though. Like yeah, there, I mean, there's, some, was... there's something really freeing in that moment. 
even though it's like stressful to the max, but it's like of course. you realize that you have some sort of control. <laughs> Sounds so yeah. silly to say, but yeah, man, that's crazy. All right, let's um, get let's get back to yeah. the to the to the interview process, though. We're, uh, yes. we're making some some nice side tracks. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess the the most important bit is like, what do people talk about in an interview? What do you need to prepare for, right? Yeah, yeah, I was I was diving into that when it's like. Uh, just the, the preparation for like an interview like how do you yeah. go about preparing yourself for the interview itself and um i'm currently uh, yeah i'll just announce it like i'm currently writing like a, an entire article that breaks down every step so it's going to be like a companion to this podcast episode um and the first point is just doing your research like I've, yeah. I'm not gonna go into detail. I'm just gonna write it. I'll like uh, read it all from the page. But there's like a couple of things that you need to keep in mind. It's just like the first big one is just knowing the role that you're gonna apply for, especially within environment art. I think there's so many, so many different branches of environment art that it might be confusing for people that don't really know like all the different uh, sides of it. Because I was uh, I was reading through an application from Guerrilla Games, and they are looking for an environment artist specifically for bunkers at the moment. The fuck. And that is very yeah, specific. It, it, it might be pretty confusing if that is like the the first thing you see, and it's like, wait, like am I a bunker artist now? Because <laughs> I, I just environment art itself is so big that you're gonna see like these really specific job titles pop up all the time. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, just doing the research on the company, doing the research on the project itself, like, I know that a lot of people just get really excited about just applying and just getting into the industry as really, yeah. really as quickly as possible. But it's still, in my case, it's still important to research what they're, what they're working on so that at least once you do the interview, and I think this is one of the, one of the common questions especially when you're going into the industry it, it's always like what what made this company attractive to you or like why do you want to work at this company yeah and yeah you don't want to sit there like oh you, you didn't you do that one uh, game with the with the thing and the this and the that <laughs> yeah you don't yeah, want to yeah you need to be prepared definitely and it's yeah, it's it's it, like do your research not only on uh, on the company itself, which is important, but also, I mean, I guess that's that's a given, right? If you want to apply for an environment artist role, you should know some environment art stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that they might ask you. But also, yeah, you know, like maybe maybe um, if you know they're gonna ask you some technical stuff, then maybe look up some stuff that you're maybe not sure about. Like if you know, okay, we're probably gonna they're gonna ask me some questions about texturing then maybe i want to look up i don't know a specific way of uh doing a non-square texture you know maybe they're gonna ask me about that yeah for some reason yeah and i know that i always forget if i need to do a one by two k or a two by one k in which way it's going to be stretched i always have this problem so you know <laughs> then I, I know okay maybe i'm going to read up on this before i uh, before I go do the interview, like mm -hmm. just make sure it's like you don't have to study for it like a test, but just like maybe refresh some your memory on some things that you may maybe haven't done in a little while, just so you're like up, you know, you're on your on, yeah on your top. I think I think this also comes down to to the first topic that we discussed in this in this chapter, where it's like knowing what you apply for, because yeah. I think a really good example for this would be. Uh, you as an upcoming hard surface artist applying for a foliage job. Yeah. Like that's not going to work. Of like course, even, yeah. even if you want to get into the industry that badly and even if they give you an interview, you're going to, which I highly doubt by the way, because they're going to look at your portfolio first. But yeah, if they're looking for that specific artist, you have to something you have to have something on your portfolio that reflects those skills that they're looking for. Yeah. And yeah, I mean 
what what do you think are like the most common um, questions that you're going to be asked and you, you should prepare for in, as for as an environment artist i mean just like we said there's many different specific yeah i think roles a, that a lot of it is going to be but, technical right sorry sorry to yeah. interrupt like no uh, yeah cuz cuz for me it was um mm -hmm. it was the the thing that stood out to me was uh i was always asked about my portfolio and like specific parts of it that yep. was um that was like the red line that I had seen through the different interviews. It was always, um, they look at my portfolio and they go to like a specific piece and they have some questions about this. Like at my first job, it would have been something like, okay, um, I see that you, you've done this, this weapon right here. Um, how long did it take you to do it? Um, what would you change? now with the with the knowledge that you have now because you did it like a year ago yeah yeah and, that's that's a big one yeah and how how long would it take you right mm -hmm. um and then so i think it's 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 good in order to prepare to also look at your portfolio and maybe think of some stuff to say and of some specific um examples maybe um and yeah i'm i'm, I'm actually pretty sure that there was one portfolio piece that pretty much got me the job at ubisoft because it had all the things that they were looking for like it was all the techniques had been used on it um mm -hmm. that 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 um yeah that were needed all the like i don't know it was it was just like the perfect storm for me and um i was also able to you know explain myself well because i um i kind of prepared for that and then when they asked me questions about how did you achieve this, how would how would would have been another way to do this technically, um, or whatever, like I, I had an answer ready, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think looking back at that interview that we did, I think uh, the thing that I took away from that interview was like obviously like we we already looked at your portfolio before, yeah. So we kind of knew that you uh, knew how to do stuff, yeah. So again, like um, when when we went into the interview. I was more interested like what what kind of person you are and mm -hmm. just like how fluent you are and I mean I think we had we had a lot of fun in that interview I think even if if we were stressing and I I literally mean we because I think that was one of the first interviews that I did as well <laughs> but uh it was yeah it was just a nice conversation and just if you if you can open up and you, you just I mean we're all we're all just humans, right? Like, we're, yeah, we've. I've been in that position like a, a ton of times too, and it's just, yeah, just have a nice conversation, and that's exactly that was, what we did, and that's also what yeah. I what I brought to uh, the meeting after, where we discuss um, all the different, uh, what do you call it? Like, we we discuss like the 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 opinions of all the different people that were involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What yeah, is I mean, what is the, the the piece that you think got you the job? Um, the the generator, the turbine generator. Because oh, I was yeah. asked like th in in my interview process, like five different people asked me about the specifics of it, <laughs> and it was like it was just like the the same workflow, you know that that we were looking for mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. It, it just ended up like being like pretty much. Uh, I don't know. That's why I felt like. I just kept getting questions about it. Um, um, but yeah, maybe I'm wrong, but it, that was just like my impression. Um, no, it's it's always cool to think um, because I I literally don't know. Like, I mean, I know all your pieces on your portfolio. Yeah. But I can't remember the talk that we had after and course, like yeah. what specifically got brought forward. But, yeah, uh, and um, but yeah, I also remember that we had a great time. I think the the first um, interview that I had was a little bit more um, technical. Yeah, and then yeah, like you said, the second one was more about like seeing the the human side of things. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I remember like having having a laugh or two w while doing the interview, and then the same thing again while I was doing my on site interview. I was like making jokes with the, you know, with like the people that are now my friends, mm -hmm. and um, it's just yeah, it's. Uh, I think so, that's that's when I had like a really good feeling about it when I was like, oh, I can, I'm actually like laughing with these people right now in the yeah. interview. Yeah, yeah. So that brings up an interesting topic, right? Because from from what we we talk about now, like an interview process is like pretty chill. But I've also been in interview processes with other companies that are uh, just chill on another level or like more business like. 
so to say, mm-hmm. where it's just like, okay, there's there's no real room for, I don't know, for for jokes or anything like that. Like, how would you sure. deal with that situation? I mean, I I would always, I think I personally would always go into the interview as like, prof, like prepared for that kind of professional interview. Mm-hmm. But if I can, if I see that there's like, like if I can see that that's where the conversation is going and it's all a little bit more relaxed, then, um, you know, it, I think it can be, it can be worth it to, I don't know, well, I don't know if I wouldn't say worth it, but you can just like, then you may, you, you may, may be able to like crack a joke or whatever yeah. and and, uh, and have some fun with the people. But it's, I think it's something you, that you, you have really to need feel, to read right? the room. Like yeah. you go in default business, but then if you know that the people on the other side of the table, they're more open and they're more loose, then you can sort of go that direction. Yeah, I mean that's that's the thing. I was I was in my interview, and then um, I don't know. I'm 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 just not gonna say any names, right? I'm just gonna say yeah, so, some <laughs> some some guy <laughs> um, said something about you know how they're uh, how they would drink beers on Friday on the rooftop. Yeah, and they were like laughing about that and like uh, like talking about that whole thing. And then you know I I was already okay, like and they were like making jokes between each other. So yeah, it yeah. felt like okay, I can I can be a little bit more relaxed in this one, and then maybe while I was talking to uh, the person that's now my lead artist, it may have been a little bit more uh, like focused on on technical stuff and uh, and all that thing, and it, maybe there wasn't as much room for jokes. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I th- yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's just you need to read the room. It's uh, really important. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I hundred percent agree. I think for some people, it's it's so difficult to do that because you're in that room you're stressing out depending depending on your who you are it might be uh a little bit worse than from other for, for other people dude man, um, i was fucking terrified yeah yeah i still i don't know if it was the interview that i did with you but i still remember my first interview and i was just like oh my god like i was so terrified of doing an interview like sitting That's on the other hilarious. side of the thing <laughs> That is hilarious. But yeah, I mean, that's the thing. When I like, just at at the start, when you're not used to it and you go to like the first meeting, even though you're just sitting in a corner listening to stuff, you're still kind of excited. <gasps> oh, yeah. I remember my first interview because it was, oh, yeah? it was in the big meeting room with like, I think five other people or something. Like that was my right. first interview. It wasn't like a small, cozy interview with like one or two people. It was like, all the other artists basically at that point i was just like yeah yeah oh my God. it was <laughs> yeah it was the same thing for my like for for my uh on site interview i had like i think like i had a round of f- four artists and then like another round of three artists <laughs> after Jeez. it was it was crazy the amount of people yeah but i mean that's the thing right you need to test the the like i guess the chemistry between the people yeah. and just like get a lot of a lot of uh, impressions yeah, and it's also a good way to test how you deal with stress too. Because of course, yeah. um, this is also another thing that I really want to say to to people out there is that the stress and you being stressed, that is something that we notice and has no factor on the interview process, at least from yeah. my side. Like I know that people are going to be stressed, but it's how you deal with that stress and how you, I don't know, in fancy terms, like rise above it. Yeah, yeah, I, that's the thing, right? If you... If you're nervous and then you just end up freezing and you can't even talk anymore, yeah, then obviously that's going to have an impact on on the interview process. But if you're just stuttering a few words here and there because you're really nervous, mm-hmm. or just like I, you're saying the wrong thing and then you yeah. correct yourself after it, like that, yeah, that stuff is all fine. I think yeah, a, a lot they of people, know it's, it's yeah, a stressful ahead. situation. Everyone knows that, right? The interviewer. Yeah. They know it because they've they've interviewed a thousand people and they've all been stressed out. Mm-hmm. There's no like iron. I mean, of course, there's, there's some people that just have the confidence or whatever it is, and they just go in there and they they're fine. Yeah, yeah. But there's always going to be a little bit of stress, and it's yeah, it's completely normal, right? It's also it's also like a a thing that no one that some people don't notice. 
Like you might be dying on the inside, but then yeah. on the outside you're totally fine. Yeah, that's true. Um, I think it's 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 in general people shouldn't stress as much. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah, but it's easier said than done, right? <laughs> of course, but you also shouldn't stress so much about stressing. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it, yeah, but I I also remember like, like I think a lot of the time you have to realize what will actually have an impact on on you getting the job. Yeah, which yeah. is mainly your portfolio, your knowledge, your and your personality. Yeah. Um. Like, and obviously they can't know everything. That's why they have to do the interviews. So you also want to show that to them. Right, because they 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 won't know. That, like, you can have all the knowledge in the world if you don't share it with them or have some kind of way to, to to let them know that you have that knowledge. It's not going to get you anywhere. Um, mm -hmm. But also, there's a lot of things that don't have an impact. Like, for example, I re I remember I had the I had my interview scheduled uh, for my first job, and it like I said, there was like a deadline thing with the uni, and then they they. They wrote me and they were like, hey, we have a meeting with a client or whatever. We have to fly out somewhere. Can we do the interview a week later? And I was like, oh, you know, that's, it's going to be really like, it's going to be really tough for me. Mm -hmm. So I asked them, uh, would it be possible to do it beforehand? And I was like, oh, this is a very bold thing. Kind of like when you said, I need an answer tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, but I mean, yeah, otherwise it's going to cost me a lot of money if I don't cancel my, my uni beforehand or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and then... Yeah, sometimes you just got to be bold. Yeah, and then they, like the email came back. I was in class. Um, I was in, in character class, I remember. And then I get an email like, uh, I guess we can do it today. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I put up my hand and I uh, asked my teacher if I could leave because I had a job interview. <laughs> and then I just uh, ran, ran back. And then uh, I had, is, I, I, so I had my dog with me as well at uni, so I had to do all that. And, or whatever and then um i didn't have a webcam which at first i thought oh god i didn't have a webcam no it's gonna ruin the whole interview you know because otherwise yeah. i would have i had like another couple days where i would have i think i had the plan to like borrow it from someone yeah yeah uh, but because we had to do it like so spontaneously uh, i didn't have one but yeah i mean of course it's it's nice if they can see you but it's not gonna ruin everything if you if you don't have a don't have a webcam i guess if you if it's like a week before or like you have like weeks to prepare and then you show up without a webcam if they ask for one yeah, yeah then yeah. that's a bad sign because you can't you know you're not responsible or reliable yeah, or whatever. You, you just need to figure some stuff out if you have the time for it yeah but if it's like that short notice then yeah they, can, they can't blame you for that mm -hmm. yeah exactly so how okay this is this is gonna be uh an interesting topic like how did you go about researching the salary oh oof i know it's a it's a, a tricky topic but uh, um yeah i was i i, I had no idea because that was i had never really worked full-time before mm -hmm. that or i had never at all worked full-time before that um so i i went on sites like Glassdoor. yeah um just looked up like you know i i always you, you always have to take that stuff with like a grain of salt mm -hmm. um but i was just looking for like the range uh okay a junior makes this much in this country and then you have to compare it to the, okay this country is you know everything's cheaper everything's more expensive so it might be a little bit more yeah yeah um yeah, I that's, actually, that's also such an important topic because people only yeah. look at the the salary and then they're like, oh my god, like that's, I don't know, that's less than what I earn now. Yeah. But then if you look at the cost of living, there's like a really good site called uh, numbeo.com. Um, I'll, I'll link it down in the, in the description. Nice. But that's a, that's a site that I use. And it's like, if you just type in like cost of living, then that's the first thing that's going to pop up. And it's going to give you like a really accurate breakdown of what you can expect for like rent, the markets, the restaurants, all that kind of stuff. And that's basically what I used to compare my salary um, from Frontier versus Ubisoft and then mm -hmm. like look at the differences in the cost of living. And the cost of living just by rent alone was like half in Berlin compared to wow. Cambridge. 
So that is, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty crazy. That that difference is so big, and that's also in the end what really pushed me over the edge to just move to to Berlin, basically. No. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's that's yeah that's definitely a big uh, thing that you have to think about as well. But mm-hmm. then, how you like prepare a salary to like ask for whatever? Um, on my first job, I guess I got kind of lucky because they just told me what I was gonna get. They didn't ask me. Because there was no like, there was not really any, any wiggle room. I guess they yeah. just told me this is what we can pay you, uh, which was nice. Um, and then on my second job, yeah, I, I I researched. I was like looking at, like you said, I was looking at cost of living in general. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just and using Glassdoor as like a way of finding yes, out like the salary. Very rough, like a very rough estimate, right? And then I was like, okay, so mm-hmm. uh, if it's gonna be around this much. Uh, money for rent you know this and that and you want to have a little bit of that blah 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 blah. just did like a quick calculation and then i came out with a number Mm -hmm. um and i told them and uh it was like yeah they there was some smaller changes but it was like more or less that that direction right it's yeah 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 because in my case uh yeah i don't know if we should talk about this actually (laughs) Because I still work at the company. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, that's always weird. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how much we this? Can... Yeah, this this entire topic is always so weird when just talking about it with other people. Like, even if we if we talk about it now, like researching the salary, which is like super useful for people getting into the industry. Yeah. But then it's always such a a, a high heat topic. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Let's just let's just get back to what is useful to people. And like you said, Glassdoor is a big one. There's a lot of um, interesting spreadsheets for like specific locations that have been going around. There was this uh, hashtag on Twitter called Game Dev Paid Me. Yeah. And there's like a, a ton of breakdown from like different countries. And it's it's really worth digging into that one. Um, but yeah. Yeah, man, I got to be honest, like negotiation tactics. I'm not that good at them. Yeah, like it's <laughs> it's it's something something that I can definitely improve upon, but uh, yeah, just looking looking at it, it's only the second job in the industry, so I still got time to learn. Yeah, still got time it's... to grow up. <laughs> yeah, it's also just not something I want to even think about that much because I I don't know, it's not I don't really care about the money, you know. Mm. It's just I, of course I want money to like I I want to be able to afford. Uh, you know, a good living or whatever. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I want to focus on, you know, which company has the coolest stuff that I want to work on or the best, uh, like, I don't know, benefits program or whatever it is, you know. Mm-hmm. I don't want to really think about if, if I if I get uh, 100 euros more or less a month. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's, that's a really good point to make as well. Because especially in the beginning of the industry, like if you're, especially the first job, you're not thinking about that stuff. You just want to get in. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, you'll pay me? Okay, that's good. I was expecting no pay. (laughs) (laughs) Fair enough. Um, Yeah, like that that stuff. Yeah, I agree. Like it's obviously the the, the thing that's going to pull you into like a studio is always going to be like the interesting project. And then probably also a big point of it is just the people that work there. And yeah. just like maybe you know some people at that company, maybe maybe there's some some interesting people that you've met online and they work at that company. So uh, yeah, that always always plays a factor. Oh man, should we should we dive into some some weird interview questions? I don't know if you can remember any weird ones, hmm. or like some some that stand out, or like maybe some stereotypical ones, because I do know that. Always the the big one that comes out is, uh, it's always a tricky one. Like tell something good about yourself and something bad about yourself. Oh, like the strengths and weaknesses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I was fortunate enough to uh, not have like not being asked that question. Damn it! Um, Should have asked that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> got you. Um, but I I prepared for the question obviously because it's such a it's such a cliche. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I actually, I think I was asked, <laughs> I was asked that question while I was interviewing, interviewing for my uni. 
And I just remember not being able to come up with a third weakness. <laughs> I was just looking at her. I just for two minutes just stuttering my way through like the, the finding like some kind of weakness. And because it's so hard because you don't want to. That's the old that's the old thing about that question, right? You don't want to tell them, oh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm super lazy. That's yeah. my third weakness, right? You don't want to tell them that. You don't want to say, oh, yeah, I, sometimes I um. I, I just don't listen to people and um, I don't know, I, I hate everyone and... Um, yeah, or yeah, I, uh, most of the time they give you like a a weakness that is technically also like a strength. I'm like, uh, I'm just a little bit too much of a perfectionist. Yeah, I'm like. too perfectionist. Uh, it's like, yeah, oh my I'm, god, cop out answer. <laughs> I'm a work. I think that's something like I, I think I said something like that in the end. I was like, yeah, sometimes I just you know I'll, I'll just work for so long and then I'll forget uh, my other stuff that I need to do. Yeah, yeah, and it's yep. like, oh my god, dude, did you just really do that? <laughs> yeah, because like I just literally could not come up with. I I should have just said, um, uh, coming up with things on the spot. That would have been perfect. Yeah, After yeah. two minutes of me <laughs> being able to come up and just prove it right there and then. <laughs> but I guess if that was my weakness, then I uh, I didn't have to say it. Right, right. Oh shit! Well, I don't know. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's um, it, it's kind of the like. There is another question that I that is kind of the same thing, but I like it because it has like a third person spin on it, and it's like, a, what do other people say about you in three words? Mm. And I I've always I've always kind of liked that because then it's not you thinking about yourself it's more thinking about the people around you looking at you interesting i've never asked people what they think about me well no but that but that makes it interesting right because then you kind of have to assume that they think this about you huh weird yeah i mean that's a good question that's uh because it makes you yeah it makes you like reflect on yourself right yeah and then all the people you've heard in the past (laughs) (laughs) Uh, yeah, is there is there anything that comes to mind from your end, like any weird stuff like that? Mm. Yeah, there was this weird guy. Um, I think he was Belgian. In my second interview, he kept uh, asking oh, me fuck. what I was wearing. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, nah, I'm just making a joke that you were <laughs> you were flirting with me in our interview or something like that. No. Oh yeah, um, yeah, with like a third person in the room making it awkward for that third person. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I actually, I can't really remember um, a weird question. Like I said, it was mostly about um, mostly about the portfolio. Then like um, a lot of it was like just about what my responsibilities were yeah, at the company yeah, no. beforehand. Just because, just um, yeah, like you said, environment artist or I think even environment prop artist can mean so many things. Um, mm-hmm. So they, they just wanted to make sure... Um, that you know that that they knew exactly what I was capable of in which uh, kind of uh, yeah in like w- what disciplines I could help them out with. Mm. Um, there was some I think a lot of people are worried about that as well uh, that they shouldn't really be is um, like software. Um, yeah, yeah. Like I uh, they they told me what software was going to be uh, used, um, but also they told me yeah, but you can also work in other stuff you know and then maybe find like a bridge and do it like this and that or whatever mm-hmm. um but um of course it can be beneficial as well like i i told them oh yeah i worked with this software and this software and this software and it was like oh well uh fortunately that's the ones we use here you know it was <laughs> like it just it just ended up being uh being perfect with, yeah with that so um, yeah i think for my first interview they they asked me that same question and then uh back then i was using max and it was like, yeah. oh, well, we only use Maya. And there was no real option to do like the weird bridge thing. Mm. Uh, I was like, yeah, sure. That's no problem. I'll just, uh, how much time did I have? I think I had a month. I was just like, yeah, I'll teach myself Maya in a month. That's no problem. Did you have to teach it teach it yourself before you started working? Or Yeah, it was like working? optional, right? They basically gave me the option of like, well, no, no, we can we can help you out like as soon as you get started. But it might yeah. be good to get down with the basics or something. Yeah, that's true. But that was just like, I'll just, I'll just, uh, well, not not teach myself like full Maya in like a month back then. That wasn't that wasn't the option because I wasn't that good at modeling and like everything yet. But uh, yeah, I went through and just 
uh, picked up Maya in a month. And then I got some really great help well, as soon as I joined the industry. Yeah. But I think that's, that's also what is the most important about this is just being adaptable. Because exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. 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 If you, if you show, if you say, well, I don't know Maya, I've never worked in it, but I'm, I'm happy to learn it. Then that already shows them that, uh, you, that like the stuff that you said in your, in your cover letter that you're like uh, flexible and uh, happy to learn that that's not just something you put in your cover letter, but it's, or in your, in your CV or whatever, mm -hmm. but that is actually true. Right. And you're, you're willing to say, Hey, uh, let's do this. Let's learn something completely new. And, um, that just in if you if you're open like that to new things it's always going to help your employer because they know that if they don't have anyone to do a certain task that maybe is a little bit daunting or new then they have someone to ask right yeah yeah i think just, that is just the the single biggest skill that is that is i think the most useful in the industry just being able to adapt and if they throw something at you there's going to be like, okay, I've never done this before. I'll figure it out. I'll make it work. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I, I think we, we talked about this a lot in, I don't know which episode it was, either the portfolio episode or the, the application one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, so I don't want to go like too deep into it. But yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's just, it's, it's, it's important to stretch just how, how freaking big that is. If you can prove to them that you're adaptable and flexible in that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's also something they're going to ask in the interview itself. Yeah. Uh, and, or or, or they're, maybe they're not going to ask it right away. Like, uh, uh, maybe they're going to ask it like in a, in a little bit more of a subtle way, right? Like, for example, like, would you be willing to switch softwares, right? Yeah. And then they, they can see your reaction if you're like, fuck no. Yeah. I hate Maya. <laughs> Max is the best. Um, or if you're like... Uh, I mean, if I have to, or maybe you're just like, yeah, sure, if whatever it takes. Right? Mm -hmm. it, 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 it definitely gives them an impression of, uh, of yeah. your willingness to, to, to like, uh, change. Yeah, I think this also ties into it when, like, uh, another question from, from the, the interview is, like, if you go through this stressful situation X, how would you tackle the situation? Because that's also showing, like, adaptability. But it's it's more on the the soft skill side where it could be, I'm just naming naming an, an an example where there's like one person in the team who might be going through some stuff. How do you deal with that stuff if it's reflecting on his work, so to say? Mm -hmm. So that could always be like an interesting example. Yeah, yeah, I, I, that's that's the thing. There is that's what we were saying, right? There's a lot of. Um um a lot of stuff that they want to find out about you maybe not even about your work but more about your personal mm -hmm. like, how, how you are as a person and yeah there's a lot of different ways to 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 find that out by like giving an example like that yeah did, yeah did, did you have any weird questions in your interviews um you that's a good question i can't remember any of the weird ones what i do remember though is that uh <laughs> like the the entire day was awesome in my interview and in the beginning i was super stressed i i came into like the the reception i just sat down was reading a book but i i wasn't really reading anything because i was so stressed out and then uh, i did all the interviews and then the last interview was with our current content director oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> and he he can be a little bit more on the what do you call it i i always call it like the militaristic side where it's like the <laughs> stern type of person yeah he's I, I would say what i would say about him is he's, he's hard to read oh yeah yeah for like sure when, when i met him when i met him for the first time i had no idea what his deal was yeah <laughs> You know, and that's like, that's exactly the the thing that I went into with with like the last half an hour because it was only like half an hour. Yeah, and we went up to the roof. We sat inside. It was just the two of us. It was no one else, yeah. and we were kind of talking going up. But it was it was kind of serious. And then uh, we sat down. I cracked a joke. It didn't land, and I was like, "Oh shit." <laughs> <laughs> oh man oh my god and i remember just like sinking through the floor and he was just staring at me like 
Well, he, he didn't say anything, but he paused and then he just asked his first question. And I was like, oh, damn. <laughs> oh, no. I can, I, can, I can see it before my very eyes uh -huh. right now. It's... And I was oh. just like, in that moment, like the, the, the four hours before that were just completely gone. I was just oh, like, yes. yeah, yeah, I fucked it up. <laughs> Whoop, I'm not getting the job. Yeah. Oh, my God. I can, I can imagine that. That is, it's such, yeah, sometimes you have that kind of uh, people. It's just like, I, 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 I wouldn't say I know him well now because I just haven't had a lot to do with him. You know, it's just here and there. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, sometimes it's, it can be like, I, like, I, I know that he's like a, you know, he's like a nice guy. Uh, he's got, you know, whatever. Um, but when you first meet some, some people, they can be like, you just have no idea. Are they like completely yeah like you said like, are they like completely stern you know n you can't joke around with them at all are yeah, they like yeah. super serious or is it just because 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 he's kind of both at the same time yeah <laughs> like, yeah, well, yeah that's the weird thing right like now that yeah. we're in the studio itself like it's totally the opposite like when yeah. when we're in the same room or whatever in the same online space we we just uh chat he's and just laugh about jokes. stuff but yeah, yeah. That, that first moment no <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah that's funny oh my god and i think that was the last bit of the entire interview day so i i think i went down to the reception said bye picked up my stuff and then i went out and um what did i do i think i sat on the stairs for like a little bit to just decompress <laughs> oh, and i was like oh my god i just threw that entire interview <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I'm laughing at you, but that's No, hilarious. no, it's awesome. <laughs> that is so funny. Because that's like it's that's exactly how how you how you think of that kind of moment, right? You're like you you literally think about that one thing you said. Yeah. And you're I mean that's I think that's just like anxiety in general, right? But you think about yeah. that one thing you said and it ruins everything. Yeah, because like, there was nothing happening. Like he was totally fine with everything we said. Like yeah. he had fun, but it's just in his own way. And it he was it was still like a business thing for him. Where I was the entire day it was more like laughing and like um Yeah, he went in with like a different mindset. Yeah, exactly. At that point, exactly. Yeah. But it's yeah, thinking back at it, it makes for a really nice story. <laughs> I can just see you sitting, uh, sitting on the on the on the stairs in front of the studio, just with like your head your head in your hands, and just like <laughs> crying. Like, what did I do? I wasn't crying, but I was definitely thinking, like, oh shit, yeah, I'll better start uh, looking for some applications again. <laughs> oh man, oh, that's hilarious. Oh. All right, we're getting yeah. we're getting close to the end though. Like uh, fifty two yeah. minutes in on our recording currently. Um, let's dive into one of the Patreon questions. Uh, sorry, sorry for the hard switch there, but um, I mean, it kind of goes into the same kind of vein, um, okay. especially with some more emotional feelings being involved. Um, so this is a question from Nikita Raquel, and I completely butchered that name, by the way. Sorry for yep. that. <laughs> well, don't you you want to correct me on that one, Will? No, it's. Uh, I'm actually looking at the name. It's it's weird because Nikita is like more like an Eastern European name, and I know Raquel from like Spain. It's like a Spanish or yeah. Spanishy name. It's, it's interesting. Maybe. It's but she's from Australia. From where? Australia. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow. Uh, interesting. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, she asked how to combat the guilty feeling when not working on your personal work. And I mean, it's straight out of the bat. It's a, it's a pretty heavy one, right? Because I don't know, to be honest. I nope. literally don't know. Yeah. I guess I found a way. Um, it's just uh, doing other stuff. And while you're doing the other stuff, you're distracted from not doing personal work. And then you, um, oh, you go to bed. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then you go to bed, uh, and then it hits you, and you're like, "Oh, I'm a failure. I, <laughs> I'm horrible. I'm a horrible yeah. person." That's how I deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> you just yeah, do I mean, something else for half an hour, and then go to sleep crying. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I sit on the stairs in front of the studio. Oh, <laughs> nice. This is an emotional end to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, I, in all seriousness, um, for me, I mean, we've talked, you know, we've said this a thousand times, but because I don't have to work on my portfolio yeah. uh, before, for like an interview, I feel like if I've done my job this week, you know, if I've done my eight hours every day, I'm good for the day. If yeah. everything I do on top is just bonus. Yeah. So if you're, it really depends on your situation. If you are a student that has to go to uni and then maybe you only have time for a couple hours a day, that's, that's fine. Or, but if, but if you're like in the position where you're like, okay, I'm just out of uni. I have half a year to prepare my portfolio, my portfolio um, to like get into the industry. Then, you know, get off your ass, do the eight hours a day because that's your job now. Yeah. You know, but I, I um, think that's a really good way of looking at it because I think where a lot of people struggle is when they don't have that set time limit. Yeah. And they just work on stuff for like the entire day, like 12 hours. And then mm. if you're, I don't know, you don't feel like doing it and you play a game for like an hour, that's when the guilty feeling sets in. But if you yeah. have like that dedicated time block, and then you kind of use uh, playing games as like a reward at the end. Then you or whatever it might be, right? I mean, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It can be any drinking with your friends or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I think that's a really good system of just saying like, okay, like I know I want to get into the games industry. I know that I'm gonna uh, work on it. Like you said, eight hours a day. Just do that time. Take obviously take breaks in between. Don't don't just sit in, at your desk like eight hours a day. That's not yeah. that's not healthy. But um, whoops. <laughs> just um, yeah, having that set time limit and then having something after it that you can use as a reward to like you know reward yourself for all your hard work that you did in that day is like yeah. a really good method of doing it. I mean, yeah, I, th I, um, I think even in the first episode, I, I said something like, I don't like having deadlines in my free time, Yeah. Um, which I still stand by. Um, but if you don't like, I, I, I think we're talking about someone who wants to get in, in the industry. Mm -hmm. um, and in that case, it's not really your free time, um, except if you are like, you know, working in, in another job because, you know, you might be in that position, which is you have to get some kind of money because you have to pay rent, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you uh, you won't have eight hours a day to work. But I think if you somehow, if you're, let's say, you you live with your parents, like that would have been my situation after I quit uni. If I hadn't gotten the job in Spain, that would have been my situation. I would have lived with my mom and then um, had all the time in the world for, um, <clears throat> for portfolio work. And that's what I would have done is I would have done... Like, okay, I'm going to do eight hours a day, or maybe probably actually more, but, you know, just set your goal eight hours a day. Yeah. And then when you're done with that, you can, you know, you can check that off your to-do list for today. And then, you know, okay, now it's my free time. Yeah. Like, that's why I really want to get back into my personal work. Um, but just with like stuff, you know, I've, everything going on, this and that, it's been like, I don't know, I've, I've, I've been enjoying other stuff more, like even like doing like some video editing which is kind of personal work but it's something else yeah yeah you know just just like mixing it up or like i've been i've been starting to uh to play to play more music in my free time which i used to do but then mm -hmm. stopped um and yeah don't like if 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 you've done your thing for today or you don't even have to do it on a day-to-day -day basis you can do it on a week by week basis you know if you've done your 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 thing for the week if you've done if you've got your progress for the week then say okay this day saturday whatever it might be it's going to be the day for me yeah and then i can start back up on monday yeah i i, I really strongly believe in um the day-to-day -day and just it's basically the same system right because you were saying like eight hours a day if you if you have no job and you're just trying to get into the industry that's viable but then if you have if you have like a, a day job I think a system that that always that always will work if you stick with it is just building a habit out of it, mm. and just setting setting yourself that half an hour a day. It doesn't have to be more, 
but it can't be less. Yeah. Because most of the time you will get started on it and it will you will get into the flow by yourself and then you you spend like 2 or 3 hours working on something. But yeah. also if you have those down days that you don't want to work, you still do half an hour. Yeah. And then you've still done your work and you still have the rest of your evening because you already did some work. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think yeah, it's it's just you need to find your own balance where you can you can get enough stuff done, but also like be happy and be satisfied with yourself. Mm -hmm. But I, I guess there's no like there's no wonder cure for saying uh, I'm, I'm going to drink this potion and now I'm not going to feel guilty anymore and I can just enjoy my free time yeah. without any guilt. It's, yeah. it's all the stuff you have to do around it, right? Yeah. You have to make sure that you feel fulfilled in what you're doing and you're because you and you also have to understand that you have to take time for yourself. You can't just like you can't just expect yourself to always work, like to just work and sleep and that's it. Mm -hmm. You need 100%. that time out because it's not gonna work in the long term. So sometimes you of course you should just stop working and stop playing video games all day or I don't know going out to drink every night, whatever it might whatever it might be that you that you enjoy. Mm -hmm. Um but sometimes you have to realize, okay, I've done enough for today. This is my time now. And yeah, that's that, that's that's the only thing I can really tell you. There's no, yeah. there's no. You just you just have to no. personally really accept that you've done enough for the day, and then just leave it there. It's it's something that, yeah, that it's gonna grow on you. I think you just have to try it and keep at it. And if it doesn't work, maybe try something else. Like uh, a recent example from what I'm just trying, because I, I have this, I have this system. Like I was just saying, right? Like I've built a habit of working on my stuff every day, but I realized that I was working on some stuff that didn't really matter. So what okay. I'm trying to do now is I still do that day-to-day -day basis, like minimum minimum an hour, and mm -hmm. well, a lot of the times it goes over that. But now I've I've structured it in a way where Tuesday is like the day that I work on like the weekly tips. So now I'm building like a backlog of weekly tips, which I never had and was always stressing about. Mm -hmm. And then Thursday is always the day for the blog and sort of seeing if I can batch stuff together better. Yeah. Because what I, what I was running into, this is, this is going on a slight tangent because it's not really related to the guilty feeling, but it's more being open about like how I'm currently experimenting with the the whole scheduling, and that is that is not a rigid system. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I'm I'm currently trying to to batch stuff together more, because I was always like I would get an email and I would try to reply instantly, but then like mm -hmm. halfway through that email I would get someone messaging me on Discord and I would reply to them and then I forgot about the email, and then it was just I would Chaos. just keep, keep kept getting distracted by a lot of stuff that now when I just batch everything together, I know that, I don't know, Monday, I need to do all my emails. And then I just go through all my emails, just send them out really quick, done. And that's that's like my daily task done. And then I can, well, I'm free, basically. So yeah, it's it's really, it's a tricky one. You, you have to find a system that works for you. But I think yeah. it always starts with, well, yourself, basically. Just trying to find a place where you can be like, okay, I did my work. Now I I, re I deserve a reward for it. Yeah, and you have to set that, um, like depending on how you personally work, right? Like some people might need a small break every hour or whatever. Yep. For example, for me, that wouldn't work. Um, I probably would do like, okay, I'm going to do my stretch of five hours of work and then I could have my stretch of two hours of whatever right mm -hmm. it's it's you need to find yeah you need to find your personal balance for it um and just make sure you have like a good balance of everything you get your stuff done but you also don't go crazy um all that good stuff yeah exactly because like you said you're already working eight hours a day and then coming home and then still well in in yeah. our cases right we're, we're we're still doing a lot of stuff on the side uh yeah yeah it can be can get overwhelming so it's it's good to to have some stuff on on the side like like you said music for you and i've recently yeah. gotten into uh daily exercises or like almost daily exercises where nice. it's like 
half an hour of working out. And the thing, the thing that's always so good about working out, I know this is like a stereotypical example, but it really doesn't allow your mind to be focused on work. Right, yeah. Because you're just going through like, oh my God, the next set. Oh my God, I need to, I need to keep up, like watch my breathing, watch this, watch that. Like there's, mm -hmm. like your, your mind is fully occupied where with a lot of other stuff. I'm still thinking about work as I'm doing them. Yeah, I know what you mean. That's why I like to listen to music a lot. Just like while I'm cooking, I'll have my earplugs in uh, and listen to some things just so I can, I can like completely have my mind free, right? Oh, cooking is such a good example, man. Yeah. I love taking so, the time to cook. Yeah, it's, it's great. And uh, yeah, you get something out of it. Oh, yeah. Some good, fresh food. All right. Sorry. I think on that note, that's a good way to end uh, the podcast because I'm getting hungry. <laughs> <laughs> oh same i haven't eaten all day let's go <laughs> all right thanks everyone for listening to this episode of the podcast and uh we'll catch you in the next one thank you guys bye bye see ya we hope you enjoyed this episode of the podcast if you did then you can check out the playlist on the right for more episodes and don't forget to like subscribe or share with friends if you're an environment artist trying to break into the industry or just looking to grow your skills, you can find a ton more resources like weekly tips, blog posts and more on beyondextent.com. But that's going to do it from our side. Thanks so much for joining us and a shout out to all of our Patreon supporters who made this possible.